All right, welcome back. And uh, it's still the breakfast show, uh, Breakfast Daily. And uh, we're having a conversation this morning on our news review segment. And um, remember, the show is interactive. And so we do want to hear from you throughout the show. If you're watching us on our streams, you can comment on using the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Our WhatsApp line is 0204 447 um, If you're just joining us, my name is David Kweku Sechi, and I've been joined this morning by Elvis Darkon, who is the editor for the Finder newspaper, as well as newscenter.com. And then we also have here Larry Dugway, the editor of the Herald newspaper. And so we're going to get right into the conversation. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. <laughs> it's good to see you this morning. Elvis, it's been a while. Very long time. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and uh, yes, and uh, a return of the morning newspaper review. I know, right? <laughs> I, I know, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we put it off for a while. All right. So, Larry, also welcome to Breakfast Daily. It's your first time. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. On Breakfast Daily. Mm. It's good to have you here. All right. Let's get right into the conversations now. The first one we want to tackle is this whole issue of um, suppliers of food. Um, you know. Uh, being owed so much money and so on and um, there's a lot of accusations as well as to you know various things that are happening in terms of um, new suppliers being contracted and all of those things let me just quickly read a story here from the finder newspaper it's on the page five of the finder newspaper the national association of institutional uh, suppliers demands payment for supplies to schools okay and um, it says here, the um, National Association of Institu in Institutional Suppliers has asked the government to pay outstanding and, and current debts owed them for supplies made to schools in the last three years. Now, the association, with 250 members um, supplying uniforms, stationery, and foodstuffs to senior high schools, um, said if government did not settle the debt in two weeks, the members would picket um, at the Ministry of Education. All right, now I'm going to go to citynewsroom.com and read also um, a story that we have there um, about government reneging on the promise, okay? And um, it says here, uh, the National Food Supplies Association has given the government up to Thursday, 20th of uh, July 2023, to pay arrears owed to its members. Now, according to the association, the government has reneged on its, response, its promise to settle the debt on Monday, 17th July. Through the, although the government, through the Agri Ministry, has assured that funds have been released for payment to be made by Wednesday, that is tomorrow, uh, July 19th, the food suppliers say if by Thursday they do not receive payment, they will resume picketing uh, with their dependents. All right, a spokesman for the Food Suppliers Association, Kweku Amedume, while addressing the press conference in Accra, indicated that the government ha is not being honest with the members of the association. Let me start with you, um, Elvis, on this. Um, it seems that we've gone round and round. Um, in circles for quite a while. Um, is it that we don't have money? Is it that um, our priorities, you know, have shifted? What is it? Because at the end of the day, part of the free SHS um, uh, construct is to also give food, you know. So what's going on here? Obviously, there's no doubt that government is broke. And that's why we run to the IMF. So we cannot deny the fact that government is financially broke. Mm. And, and that is at the bottom of all these issues. It's, you remember that, yeah, for the like some years now, mm. school closure and all that because of food has really subsided for a while. Yeah. But the moment government began to face financial issues, you realize that Government is actually owing almost everybody in this country. <laughs> everybody that works with government is owed. Mm. And that's the bottom line of the issue. And if you are in a country where the government has run to the IMF for support, obviously you should know that the finances are in the red. Mm. And therefore, some of these challenges are expected. However, I always say that, you see, we as a country are finding it difficult to make meaningful progress at the pace we want it simply because we've allowed 
the country's planning and everything in the hands of politicians. In every country where politicians are the ones that are deciding for the country, mm. progress is mm. slow. Because for politicians, they have so many motivations for taking a decision. But in countries where people really want their countries to progress, they leave nation building into what we call thinkers for the nation. Mm. They put in place strategic institutions, strategic individuals who take decisions for the state mm. and the government implements and makes things work. For food, for instance, in schools, I don't understand why we, we should have a problem. We are running an educational system and annually we have a budget. We know whatever that we need to yeah. run the system. Mm. And there's a, a budget you need that you need to provide. And you know when school will reopen and when school will vacate. Mm. And you should have timelines as to when these resources should be made available for these institutions to be able to operate. Education is so important. So if we, we know all these things, and we've not been able to put in place measures to ensure that we don't experience some of these things, it's, it's only indicative of how we handle our development and planning in this country. Government is broke. There's no doubt about it. But if government feels that we are not going to be able to say school should be on hold mm. because we are broke, yeah. then some people would have sat down to alternatively look at how do we make sure that schools do not reopen and we have these challenges. Are there some government expenditures going on somewhere that can, rather can be suspended mm. and will not have that kind of impact that we will have if school does not have the resources? Yeah. These are some of the ways I think that we as a people, if we are allowing people to do the proper planning, then we should be able to resolve some of these things and they shouldn't even be coming up. Mm. Because for basic things like food, is that school uniform, pencils, books for school mm, children? Mm, mm. And we know the academic year, we know when it starts and when yeah. it ends and everything. Yeah. And we can't just sit down and say, look, government, yes, you are broke, but we cannot, we cannot say that school should be on hold. Mm. So quickly, this team of uh, uh, members from Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Education, uh, uh, the Buffer Stock Company, quickly we constitute this team, sit down, come up with a proposal as to how we can make sure that schools run and have all that they have. They, um, Minister of Finance will definitely tell that, okay, we don't have the money. Mm. Uh, Minister of Education also, we don't have the money. Then the question will come, okay, where and where are we spending money now? Let's look at it if we can really cut some of those expenses or yeah. we can suspend some of those and divert the money okay. to come and support the school system because mm. we can't stop it. Probably you are paying for maybe some construction of certain projects. And you can say, okay, I can hold that on for six months mm. and look for money and then continue. But for the education, we cannot just say that schools should be reopened because we don't have money and all that. Yeah. So I think that we always have to be mindful of forward-looking planning and thinking. Mm. You see, when these things happen, you ask yourself, do, are we really working with forward thinking and planning? Yeah. If we are, then why should we be here? So is it, it suggests that the people we have given mandate to, yeah. giving power to, to plan for us. When we read about this thing, when these things happen, one thing just comes to mind that the people in charge really may not be involved in forward thinking mm. because there's no way we should have a school system facing this kind of problem. Mm. So for me, I think that, and I have always said it, if, if we want development of Ghana to move on, we need to really look at how best we can depoliticize everything we do in this country. You may be government in power. Education is supposed to be run by education ministry. But can't we have a team of experts who have done education in this country from both political divide lead a committee that guides and directs the education ministry? Mm. Because probably the people at the education ministry may not be up to the tax. Probably the experience of these past people can guide those that are in leadership. So can't we have a system where we say every sector of the economy these people have been identified as brainy people mm. with huge experience. Yeah. They've handled these port portfolios in the past. They face these challenges. Yes, you are government in power. These are the people you want to man the place. But we have this team of people mm. which have shown that they are capable yeah. to support them in discharge of their duties. Mm. I think that we should begin to think far than what we are doing now. I think what we are doing now 
we, we have allowed certain... There are a lot of brains in this country. I can, I, oh, I, I can say there are a lot of yes, people who can no help. Doubt. But we exclude them because it is not their party in government. Mm. So they will sit somewhere even though they can help. But you need the human resource to develop a country. Mm. So if we can sit down and say, whichever government that comes to power, we want all former ministers of education, all former director generals of education mm. to be part of a committee mm. that provide guidance and direction. Yeah. Even though the minister is there, the chief director is there, we want those who have handled that portfolio in the past to help that ministry to grow. That is how we we'll build a nation. Yeah. But when we think that it's only our people, we are in government, so once we appoint the minister, a chief director, mm. they should run the ministry. We will we'll really be hit with some of these roadblocks. So I, I, I always say that, look, we cannot be doing the same things and expect a different result. Okay. Until we begin to think and say, if we can really make use of, of the best brains in this country mm. in every sector, mm. and governments will come and go, but these people will be like a standing group of people that will consistently advise yeah. on how that sector should go, the direction for each sector. Yeah. We will be making faster progress than what we are doing. And I think that it's about time yeah. we as a nation begin to have this kind of conversation okay. that there are so many people in this country, who can very good, contribute. experience, knowledge, everything who can help. Okay. Let's involve them in some of these things. Okay. Larry, um, there's a quote here from the... Um, the Mr. Amedume, yeah. um, he said here, the great minister, Brian Champon, came to tell us that there were plans to pay us today. So we summoned our members to come for their checks, only for the buffer stock CEO to tell us that they have not received any money to that effect. So if there's no money, why are, you make, why are we making promises? Gogo, uh, <laughs> you know something. <laughs> I've listened to Elvis. Yeah. You know, and uh, he's calling for another dialogue. Mm. I thought that we've spoken enough, <laughs> haven't we? Uh, we've talked a lot. Bro. Yeah, we've talked a lot. And there's <laughs> no solution in all this. We, we keep talking and talking and talking, and we are not getting to the bottom of this. We have competing demands, roads here, mm. hospitals there, schools there to build. And so, but then a politician or a group of politicians came together and said, oh, we have a need. We need to develop the next human resources. Mm. And so let's go, let's do free SHS. It's a good idea. However, people kept asking, where was the money going to come That's from? Right. Yeah. And you couldn't provide anything. Just when people were beginning to come to terms that, okay, now you've won power, and that sit down with others, experts as he suggested, mm, mm. and let's think through this properly. Yeah. You went to a school, I think that's a Kwapimang, you know, secondary school, mm -hmm. and then announced that, listen, next week or next month, we are starting free SHS. And everybody was like, hey, yes, we are going to go. <laughs> but where was the money going yeah. to come from? Yeah. That is where we are today. Hmm. Listen, it is not just food suppliers who are complaining, yeah. but book su uh, uh, suppliers are also complaining. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uniform. Uniform suppliers yeah. are also complaining. Many others are complaining. I know of a school in Accra, let me be blunt with you, it's Presec. Mm. Okay. In Presec, parents have now had to be sending money to their wards to support them. To support wow. them weekly. Wow. They are having to buy mowers for the school. Okay? Wow. They are having to get watchmen for presec. They are having to engage additional cooks or matrons for presec. Because you have over about 5,000 students to deal with. Now, in that confusion, I think this is just presec. I don't know what's happening in my school, Bishop mm. Herman. Mm. Mm. But I'm sure, I mean, that is even in a remote area. 
I don't, which school did you go to? Nakpando is not there. Uh, well, I, did, well I, did, I, did, I didn't do second school in Ghana, by the way. Uh, so, Nakpando okay. is a big yeah. town. It's not no, but I mean, I understand what Larry is saying. You know, if something that's so close to the seat of government is having these challenges, and suddenly, if it's further problem. moved, further removed, what, 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 what would be happening yes. there? You, 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 you get what, what, what we are talking about? And, I mean, we just in there. Minister, finance minister is saying something else. Then the uh, Agri Minister says a different thing. Mm. Then the Buffer Stock CEO is also saying another. So, and so we're working in silos. Exactly. So we don't know who to believe. Is the Buffer Stock guy saying that he's not in touch with the Agri uh, sorry, with the Education Minister it's or even not. the Finance Minister? It's probably not. You, you get it. Such that Agri Minister comes to promise that, listen, we are paying you next week because money has been released. Released to whom? <laughs> In fact, I read education and education is that 480 something million had been released. I read somewhere like that. And so, well, how so, come? Yes, so, I read somewhere. So, like so that. who is to pay who? Do you get it? I also read uh, the Buffer Stock CEO saying that I think he was away. He went on uh, hard pilgrimage or so. Immediately he came back. He granted an interview to uh, um, he granted an interview to this uh, station, Hot FM and said that, listen, nobody is old. OK? Meanwhile, then there's a memo from the Ministry of uh, uh, Education to the Minister of uh, uh, Finance saying that, they are, that these suppliers are owed close to 270-something million Ghana cities. And that is just for you know, the last two years, meaning additional fund, you know, debts had been accumulated. Mm -hmm. And so who do we believe in all this? Do you know what I foresee? What? I foresee the present government, okay, or President Kufado, just waiting. You know, he's carrying a certain load, very heavy. And he's just waiting for somebody to just hold the thing. And so, listen, let me adjust it for you properly. <laughs> and the man will just dash, <laughs> you know, away from, from what, whatever load he's carrying. Yeah. And I also foresee, you know, somebody coming to say that, hey, you know what, guys, listen, this whole thing, it's not feasible. Be because as I won't have my son in school, and government or somebody has promised that, listen, I'm going to feed this son of mine da daily. And the food is not coming. And so I had to look for money and send to this guy for so, him to be eating. So, so the Daily Guide has an, another angle to this story. It says uh, government yesterday, yesterday, as in, as in, today is the who is the, who is the daily guide quoting? I'm, 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 I'll, 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 I'll give you that. So, as in, seventeenth of um, July. Okay. It says government yesterday released fifty percent of the twenty twenty two food supply arrears to the National Food Buffer Stock Company Limited for onward processing and payment to suppliers. A statement issued by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture said disbursement of the money from NAFCO to suppliers was expected to take immediate effect. Um, the statement added that the remaining 50% of the arrears will be paid within the next 30 days. Okay. So it's quoting Ministry of, of Agric. Agric. Yes. Meanwhile, the, the, statement they meanwhile, the memo that I'm talking about, I can mm. send it to you, went from uh, Ministry of Education to Ministry of Finance. How come the money was rather released to uh, 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 Ministry of Agric? Agric? I mean, by this yeah. statement. Yeah. Because so, the, the Buffer Stock Company is under the Ministry of Agric. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. how come it took uh, the Ministry of um, Education to be demanding the money? Because the contractors have a contract with the Ministry of Education. <laughs> is, it, is it a system in Iran? Is it? But then again, <laughs> we've created a humongous yeah. mess. You, you understand? You know? it? So it's like Ministry of Education, the one that has contracted the Buffer Store Company yeah. to work on its behalf. Yes. So when the people demand money from Buffer Store, Buffer Store yeah. send a request to Ministry of Education. Yeah. The Education will send a request to Ministry of Finance. Yeah. And when Meanwhile, they Buffer Store <laughs> works <laughs> under the <laughs> Ministry of, of Agric. Agric. Uh -huh. So the money will go back to Education. They will send it to Agric, who is the head ministry, and then it will go to Buffer Store. 
These are the kind of complex things I was talking about. That we should have people to sit down and... I, 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 I expected <laughs> uh, um, Buffer Stoke CEO because, uh, Elvis, the finder is quoting that. It's quoting... Uh, uh, the suppliers. The suppliers. Yes, and yes. then also... Uh, you also mentioned uh, the CEO of Buffer Stock saying he hadn't received any money. Yeah. No, that's a uh, uh, city online. Yes. Okay, that he hadn't received any yes, money. Yes. So, Minister of Agri says, listen, money, you know, a certain amount had been released, 50% mm. of the debt owed has been released. The CEO is saying, listen, I have not received any money. No, no, I think the Minister of Agri statement is a, a, a late statement. So the man has granted the interview before the Minister of Agri statement. Yeah, yeah, and if yeah. you listen to the Minister of Agri statement, he say. The money I believe for processing, which meant that the money actually has not reached them yet. Do, do you know? <laughs> yes. The yes. Say something yes. So, so that's what it, it means. They have to go to the process before. Yes. It gets so to from Daily Guy's story, <laughs> yeah. it appears that <laughs> it appears that it, it, it's not going the, to go the to release the was made on Monday, <laughs> yeah. but the promise was that Monday you will get it. Okay. <laughs> but it was maybe signed and released on I like Monday. The, I like that maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you see. And, and it has to go to a certain process yeah. before the money is ready for yeah. the people. <laughs> but, 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 but you know, so what I've, I've picked up is this. There's actually a huge debt sitting on the table of uh, the buffer stock guys. So as soon as the money comes in, mm, they the go debt. out there, you know, uh, picking what to pay, you know, who, what to pay or who to pay, and so mm, on. Mm. Now, it gets even more, you know, uh, 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 confusing when the same buffer stock is being accused of engaging other contractors to supply, mm -hmm. obviously, because they owe this mm -hmm. and, and they can't pay, and then so they, they are dodging the, debt to get the guys <laughs> by engaging another. And, but you see, you see, what we are doing, I, I don't know, I mean, it's almost as, as if. Let's engage another group of people. By the time, you their know, their debt is yeah, up for payment. We, yeah, we, we would leave have, them and go uh, to another group. We, you know, I, I don't know. similar thing happened with the, the Ghana <laughs> siblings. So we are yes, yeah, the, the yes, I remember. Yeah, no, the, the point yeah. is that the, said, the, the, the green Ghana, so the green Ghana project. Ghana is so much in debt. Yes. Okay. So to pay the debt is a problem. It's it's, it's a huge issue. Whether contractors of rules. And if the, yeah. the government owes them about 16 billion. Yeah. And I, IPPs. The, yeah, IPPs. Yeah. IPP debt is almost two billion dollars. So, so two billion, billion dollars. Everybody. Bring it to Ghana City. Including, that's, including that's, you. That's <laughs> about 20 something billion. So government owes everywhere. And the debt governments owe and the releases that will come. As they are saying, mm. they are releasing 50% of the amount owed. Yeah. That 50%, who gets paid and who does not get paid? See, so that makes us so much. That's what I'm saying. See, that's what we are saying. Fifty percent of what? <laughs> of what they owe. They what has been processed for payment? <laughs> exactly. And, and that was. And that's, and that's even 2022. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's not. That's not. Has nothing to do with from January so, till now. So I wasn't calling for a dialogue. What mm. I'm saying that if we have people with their brains who will sit and consistently think, some of these things can be dealt with. That's Larry we rightly said. Now you hear Buffer stop saying something. The Minister of Inform um, uh, Education uh, says something. Yeah. Agree, also says something. Everybody says, if there is this committee, some people who sit back, yeah. there will be only one communication. Mm. And then the processes will be linear, yeah. not this zigzag things we are saying. So, so this yeah. is what I'm talking about. Whether we like it or not, look, government owes so much, not only about school, but almost every everybody that provides something for government or works for government is owed a huge amount mm. of money. And government doesn't have the money to pay. Yeah. He has to pay in bits and pieces. See, but the annoying thing is that once government owes this, a lot of resources are also being wasted elsewhere. A lot of resources are being wasted somewhere. So when I hear people talk about free SHSB a burden, I disagree with Larry. Free SHSB is never a burden. If we really mm, yeah. want our nation to go forward, I tell people, in the past five years, cumulative government budget expenditure it's over 500 billion. If we are saying that we spent five or seven billion on free SHS, mm. out of 500 billion, how can that be a problem for Ghana? If five years, government budget is over 500 billion, yeah. and you spend even 10 billion out of it on free SHS on 1.2 million children, it's a where is the 490 billion? Uh, billion. billion? Yeah. Where is it? Why are we not asking questions about where did the remaining money go? But every focus is about. Free SHS. Yeah. See, nobody should convince anybody that free SHS is a problem for this country. We should be asking. So you feel that the wastage the interesting thing is that we can actually account for what goes into free SHS. Mm. But in other places, we can't even account. We say we've paid 
almost a billion dollars for power we did not consume in this country because of the kind of agreement mm -hmm. we've signed. One billion dollars. Bring it to see this is how much. It's more than the amount we said we have spent on free SHS. Yeah. Yet we are paying that money and nobody complains. Or we don't seem to have problem with it. So is it, there's so much wastage in other places but, that we but, will but, not but, need. But you and I know you understand where, it? where the bulk of you know, those energy payments end up. You yeah. understand you, it? you and I know. No, no, that is what I'm saying. There's a lot of wastage. <laughs> so why don't we look at the wastage here? Yeah. Instead of free SJ, which we can actually account for and know mm. the benefit is bringing, mm. Mm. but the 900 million to 1 billion we are paying for power we do not consume, yeah. how did it benefit Ghana? What, what productivity did it bring? So, you see, when people talk about free SJ, I say, look, you, you, you may say adding it, yes, but then why are we not talking about so much money that is going to waste? Mm. When this bond exchange program came and the, those who, the people who were resisting it were asked to bring a proposal, they sent a proposal to government in which they said, Government has so much money, about 85 billion, that it can recover and not do debt exchange. They listed the various debt, including OMCs who buy oil from the sell and the taxes they are supposed to pay to state, they don't pay. Huge monies. But we are not asking government that why are you not collecting the money that somebody owes you? Yeah. Why are you not stopping this wastage right. here? But we are only saying that money could, spent on could, free estate yeah. is a problem let, for let, the economy. Let me quickly chip in. Yeah. Okay. Evans and I have, you know, operated in this space for quite some time. Mm. And we know that, I mean, years ago, there used to be this confusion about how schools in the north that were mainly on scholarships, on, on scholarship. free food and all that, were having difficulties getting their money. Getting their money. Yeah. And that Charles was always in the news. Today, Charles is not talking mm. because they feel they will be victimized like others you know, and so on. Now, so even, and this was long before free SHS yes, came too, in. Yeah. So even within that, I mean, for want of a better mm. word, that well-defined geographical mm. area, mm. there were issues. Yeah. Now we are having to do this whole thing, you know, by, uh, you know throughout the country. Mm. And we think that we wouldn't have issues. Issues, yeah. We're not able to even solve it on, the, it? on the smaller scale. At a point in time, I let's, think the finance minister even said that, listen, if I can afford mm. as a parent, let me pay. Yes. I, even I the finance minister, I don't, maybe he should be bold enough to announce that, listen, guys, the free SHS is an issue because we can't pay suppliers. And I'm sure if he's able to do that, I'm sure parents will be willing to support. Well, you see, the thing I will not support any declaration. I would rather want the finance minister <laughs> and the government to go for monies yeah. that are owed the state yeah. to cut the wastage what? and spend the money on free estate. Why, you talking? Why well, would I want to entertain well, wastage? Well, Why would I want to entertain people owing government and not paying? And then that because I will not chase those ones, <laughs> a good program should be dropped. I will not do that. Okay. I will not do well, that. 